Song of Solomon 1 verses 1 to 3 by Ken Hardesty In beginning a series of devotionals for the chapel website my thoughts went immediately to Song of Solomon. A few months ago I spoke on this wonderful portion of scripture to the men at the men's retreat. I have more recently been reviewing it expressions and enjoying some new insights. I trust that the thoughts shared over the course of the next few weeks will stir our hearts to a fresh appreciation of our relationship with the Lord of Glory. The Song of Solomon, by way of introduction, is a delightfully inspired love story. It has been interpreted in a couple of different ways by saints down through the ages. Some have seen it as a love story between Solomon the king and a Shulamite woman. Others have seen in it a love triangle between Solomon, who is trying to woe the Shulamite woman, and her love for a shepherd boy who also is deeply in love with her. Many however also see within its pages in type and symbol a wonderful picture of the love of the Lord toward his people. I think that we would be a bit wooden not to see within its pages, the love of a Savior for those he came to save. We, by way of devotional thinking, will be considering this account as it relates to the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, toward us his bride, the Church. Certainly, by way of application, we can relate many of the stirring accounts of this book to the intimacy of that relationship. We will take the literal interpretation and seek through it see the substance of which the shadow portrays, at least to our hearts as the espoused bride of an eager and passionate bridegroom. With that said, let's consider the verses before us today. For your love is better than wine, because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore the virgins love you. This story begins with the passion of the lover of her soul. The first word for love that we encounter here is a word that means to boil. It came to be translated as love from the passion and boiling of the emotion that love will often stir in the breast. The love of this one is bubbling over. It is passionate. It is seeking. We find a wonderful example of this in chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. Our Lord was the pursuer of our soul. He sought us, and then bought us, with his own precious blood. When we were still dead in our trespasses and sins the hound of heaven pursued our soul. How wonderful it was when our souls yielded to him. We began to enjoy the fragrance of his good ointment. His name is ointment poured forth. His name represents his character, his reputation, his integrity, all that he is. What a wonderful name! The psalmist in Psalm 8 says, O Lord our Lord, how excellent is your name! And Solomon in Proverbs 18 verse 10 exclaimed, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and are safe. His name, all that he is and means to us, is poured out. Not contained in a vase or jar sealed so that none of the fragrant aroma can escape and be experienced by man. It is opened yet poured forth so that all can enjoy its fragrance. Oh how we enjoy the fragrance of that name, of that person. May you this week as you walk in a world that is more aptly described by Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor, so does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. Seek the fragrance that is sweet. All the things of this world are as a fly in the ointment. They will distract and cause one to miss the enjoyment of the fragrance of that peerless name. May we not be allured by them, but by the fragrance of a name who has become to us, our all in all. Ken H. Hardesty